Hello students, today I have come up with the next part of the chapter Coordination Chemistry from class 12 syllabus. Today I'll start with optical isomerism. Okay, so let's start with it. From the next video, I'll start with Werner's theory. Okay, so optical isomerism. You all know about what, the, what are op optical isomers, what are D forms, what are L forms from organic uh, chemistry already. But still I just want to discuss with you that what are optical isomers or what is optical isomerism. I'll explain that to you with the help of an example. I'm taking an organic example only because you have learned about optical isomerism from, uh, from organic chemistry only. So I'm taking an example from organic only. Okay. okay, this is the structure of R2-butanol. You know about RS nomenclature. So, I think I don't need to tell you what is R, what is, what is S. That is irrelevant in this chapter. And S2-butanol. Okay, look at the two structures. Uh, this is the structure of R2-butanol and this is the structure of S2-butanol. Okay, so this is the structure of R2-butanol. The mirror image of R2-butanol is S2-butanol. And look at this structure. Uh, both the structures are same. Both the structures are same, means the structural formula same. All the uh, physical and chemical properties are almost nearly same. But the difference lies in the uh, isomerism. How the difference lies? See, this is just the mirror image of this. And the mirror images do not superimpose on each other. Means, if you pick up this molecule of S2-butanol and place it on R2-butanol, will the uh, two structures match with each other? No, because if you uh, take up this and place this on R2-butanol, you will see that uh, the ethyl group is on this side. The OH group has different geometry from both the, uh, from, means it has different geometry, means this will not exactly match with this. So, this structure will not exactly superimpose on this structure. These two isomers which are just the mirror images of each other and they are non-superimposable mirror image. The word non-superimposable are very important for optical isomerism. They are non-superimposable mirror images. These two structures are known as optical isomers. And the molecule 2-butanol is optically, R2-butanol is optically active. Okay. It is said that for in case of a optically active compound, in case of an optically active compound, what the two isomers, one of the isomer will rotate the, means if a polarized light is passed through it, if a plain polarized light is passed through uh, these compounds, one of the isomers will rotate the plane of the plane polarized light towards the left and one and the other isomer will rotate the plane of plane polarized light towards 
right the one which will rotate the plane of plane polarized light towards left it is known as levo rotatory or l form and the one which will uh, rotate the plane of plane polarized right, light towards right that is dextro rotatory or d form according to iupsc uh, convention it will have a negative levo form will have a negative rotation and dextro form will have a positive rotation and for two butanol it is seen that that r2 butanol will rotate the uh, plane of plane polarized light towards right at an angle of 13.5 and s2 butanol will rotate the plane of plane polarized light towards left at an angle of 13.5 since this is the levo form it is having a negative uh, rotation and this is having a positive rotation okay so buta 2 butanol is optically active substance and the d and the f forms d and the l forms are known as you know very well in enantiomers the d and the f form, l forms are known as enantiomers okay so this is optical isomerism optical isomerism is another type of isomerism which is also shown by coordination compounds also okay another thing which i need to make you remember that that there is an optically inactive form also which is known as the mesoform or the mesoform when i'll come to the uh, optical isomerism i'll show you that how uh, how uh, the coordination compounds show optical isomerism i'll come to that point okay okay for uh, coordination compounds for coordination compounds optical isomerism means just remember one thing that for an for being optically active a substance should not have a plane of symmetry means asymmetry is uh, required for optical isomerism to take place okay asymmetry is very much required for optical isomerism to take place there should not be a plane of symmetry for that reason the square planar complexes do not show optical isomerism because they have a plane of symmetry but for tetrahedral substances as i have shown you the structure of r2 butanol and s2 butanol those are tetrahedral type of complexes for te uh, means that is the tetrahedral type of a structure for tetrahedral stru type of structure the compounds will show optical isomerism there are examples and uh, for coordination compounds to show isomerism either there will be all the different ligands present or the compound has to have at least one bidentate ligand otherwise asymmetry won't occur and optical isomerism won't be present so what are the two points number 1 for the coordination compounds to show optical isomerism number 1 all the ligands has to be different and the second point is that uh, there should at least be one bidentate ligand okay okay let's come to 
tetrahedral complex is basically remember that optical isomerism for co coordination compounds at your at your level you only uh, means maximum of the octahedral complexes show optical isomerism but there are uh, two examples which i need to tell you that they will show uh, they are the tetrahedral complexes that show optical isomerism okay first let me uh, show you the structure of a ligand which is benzoyl acetone acetonate benzoyl acetonate the structure is okay so this is the structure of this is the structure of benzoyl acetonate okay and this and these are the two donor sites the two oxygen atoms are the two donor sites let's come to the molecule the molecule the structures are shown with beryllium okay means the central metal is beryllium here this will show optical isomerism this structure will show optical isomerism you know that for showing optical isomerism the right side will be the left side and the left side will be the right side so let's start with it okay so these are the two different optical isomers okay now remember one thing that why the tetrahedral complexes having all the different ligands why the tetrahedral complexes having all the four different ligands why those do not show optical activity why the tetrahedral complexes like this uh tetrahedral complexes why tetrahedral complexes like this where all the four ligands are different do not show optical activity what is the reason behind it the reason behind it is that that these complexes are very labile 
these complexes are very labile what does the word labile means labile means that they are very reactive type means they the bonds are not at all strong in labile complexes in labile complexes the bonds are weak i'll come to the word labile and inertness when i will talk about thermodynamic and kinetic stability i will come to those points later but now let me just tell you that what does the word labile means just remember that labile means lability or labile means the bonds are not at all strong so uh, they do not show optical activity the isomers cannot be isolated only okay so the com uh, the com or tetrahedral compounds having four different ligands do not show optical activity now i'll come to coordination uh, means the coordination compounds which are octahedral complexes octahedral complexes that show optical activity are of three different types i have told that for octahedral complexes uh, either and tetrahedral complexes for for actually for the coordination compounds only to show optical activity either all the ligands should be different or they should have at least one bidentate ligand so i'll come to the coordination uh, compounds which are octahedral complexes and they are of the type the first type is am aa whole to x2 type the first type is am aa whole to x2 and the example of this type is okay okay now remember another thing that it does not mean that both the trans and the cis forms are optically active it does not mean that a molecule is optically active means its trans form as well as the cis form will be optically active no let's come to the example then only will let's come to the structure actually then only will understand this see I am doing the trans structure at first, okay? E N. I have told you that we can connect since uh, both the do do donor atoms are nitrogen. So I am just placing the N atoms at the ends. You can place the ends also. You cannot place also. these are the trans forms trans forms of this structure just look at the two mirror images they are forming superimposable mirror images just look at this that's why since they are forming superimposable mirror images so you know that the, the trans form of this molecule is optically inactive or we can say mesoform okay so the trans form is optically inactive or mesoform now i'll come to the cis form
ओके सो दिस इज फॉर्म Look at the cis form. The cis form will form non-superimposable mirror images. So there will be one uh, D form and the other will be. So this is the D form and this is the L form. So the cis form is optically active. Optically. active okay okay let's come to the next type this was the example of the first type next come to the next type a a a whole to So there will be only one M in X to Y to type. Let's give an example of this. Here also I'm direct since I have explained to you that all the cis and transforms are not how all the cis and transforms are not optically active. I'm directly giving the example of that form which is optically active. C R Cl two, En, NH three, hole two, plus. Okay, so let's first draw the cis form. As usual, we have to draw the cis form. this is the cis form sorry this is one of the optical isomers and the other one this is the these are the two optically active isomers d l optically active okay now i'll come to the next type m a a whole three type m a a whole three type let me give one example of this type See in this case there are no cis and transforms like this. I will directly show the. this one is the
when you will draw in copy please draw this parts nicely since i am drawing on board no this sometimes okay so d and l optically active there are many other examples of this type instead of ethylene diamine there can be oxalato ligand also oxalate oxalate can also be used here okay so that is not at all a problem okay so uh, these are all about the optical isomerism in this video in this class note also you won't get any of the structures you can understand that this type of structures cannot be drawn in the word so look at the video and do the structures in your copy okay the structures won't be available in the study material okay so in the next video i'll start with werner's theory thank you